Hey, everybody. Um, this is me in the Motors Lab, where um, normally you would be with me, and we'd be doing all these uh, labs together. But that's not the uh, way things are going right now. So what, what I'm going to do in here is I'm going to work my way through all the skills that that you guys are looking at when you're doing these Amatrol e-learning, and the first one that we're going to do, the first one that, that comes up is uh, DC generators. So I'm gonna walk you through the skills. I hope that eventually you can come in here yourselves and put your hands on this equipment, make these measurements, get really familiar with, with all this because we have just a wonderful uh, electrical machines lab. This is an online class and you know we have made provisions for you to do this virtually through the Amatrol e-learning. It's really good, but there's no substitute for getting in here and doing this. So as the semester progresses, I will offer you opportunities to come in. We'll do all the right things in terms of our social distancing and um, you know those types of things to where you know, you can get in here and feel safe about what it is that you're doing. But um, anyway, so so this particular video, and it could be the first one that you've seen, depends on where we're starting. Um, but, you know, for this fall 2020 semester, uh, the first one that we're going through is uh, DC generators. It works out well with what you've studied in terms of uh, the chapter four material. And so this is what we're doing. This is what we're going through. So what, what I want you to do with me here is, you know, just follow along as, as I go through this uh, first skill where we're going to set up a system. And let me just show you this system. Looks uh, maybe a little complicated at this stage, but you know, what we've got is a three phase AC induction motor and it's coupled to a DC machine. We would call this our prime mover because it is the thing that's going to rotate the armature and create the voltage output with our DC generator. Now this can also function as a motor and we'll see that in some subsequent uh, labs that, that we go through, uh, actually the next one. So what we're gonna work toward, and I'll, I'll uh, go ahead and show you what this, what this is doing. Uh, initially, I'm gonna put the main power on and then I'm going to uh, release the e-stop. And when I do that, the uh, AC induction motor comes on. It turns at one speed uh, primarily, and it is coupled to the uh, generator here. We're also uh, connected to a resistive load here, um, and we can vary what that load is with these switches here. We'll walk through all this in just a second, but anyway, what we're doing is we've got a DC generator and we're getting an output um, from that DC generator. Uh, it says about a hot, approximately 130 volts. Okay, now I'm going to step back and we're going to uh, look at this more in detail of uh, the skill one from DC generators. Okay, let's step back and look at our uh, setup a little, little bit closer and I'll try to stay out of the picture as best I can. Sometimes that's a little bit hard to do. Let me move our camera over just a little bit here. We'll get a complete picture of this setup that we've got. And then we'll walk through the, the part of that, that that tells us how to do this. So as I'm looking at this skill one, it's uh, called determine the brush polarity of a DC generator using a digital multimeter. So the, the thing is, I mean, really all we're doing is we're going through you know, a setup and understanding uh, how to put all this together. I'll begin by just telling you that this is the uh, DC uh, motor trainer, one of them. This is called the electric motors workstation. And what it has is a place for two machines generally to be placed. And, you know, depending on what you have uh, mounted on the uh, trainer, you'll have a, a template that goes with it. These are uh, removable and they and tell us, they tell us how to wire this thing up, okay? And so these circuits that you're gonna see in uh, the motors class are really pretty simple circuits. 
And so I'm going to deconstruct this because it, you know, it doesn't take us long to put it together. And I want to show you how that works. So over here, what we'd call the prime mover, right? It's supplying the mechanical energy to the uh, generator. And I'm going to disconnect all this over here as well. So we can walk through all these steps together. And I'm going to even uh, disconnect the um, resistive load that we have here. And now um, we'll just begin with this and work our way through it. Okay. And this is what you would be doing were you here and what I hope you do anyway um, as you come in here uh, later on. All right, first thing, you know, when we get to the second page of this, it, it says locate a three-phase AC motor and a DC motor generator. Now, eventually I want you to read in the name tags or the name plates uh, for these different machines and they will tell you exactly what it is that you're working with, okay? Now we're not to that point yet, but you know, so at this stage, you know, you know, look at the pictures of uh, another good place to look on, on uh, this and this lab is each one of the machines will have a uh, label telling exactly what it is. And this says it's a three phase AC motor. It's also got an identification number EL61314D. And so we don't have to get through uh, wiring the motor up completely every time we do this, which would take a lot of time. They've uh, constructed these cables that we just plug into the back. Um, we've also located a DC motor generator. And so he's telling us that what we should do is place the three phase motor here on the left side. These are fastened securely to the trainer with these uh, fastening uh, nuts here, these brass nuts. And we, we get those nice and tight. We don't want to over tighten them or anything, but just want to make sure that they're secure. We do that on both sides. And, you know, he tells us, of course, that's mounted on the left side of the trainer. Um, let's see, otherwise he, in the next step here, and I, I'll probably make a separate video to tell you how to do this, but as you can tell, once I've brought the DC machine here, I've also coupled it with what's called a Lovejoy coupling. And you're seeing that explanation there in your uh, lab manual. And it's a, a actually a three part device that uses a shaft key. Um, and, and so this allows us to bring these two machines together and couple the shafts uh, together and you know, working through the particulars of this uh, Lovejoy coupling um, you know, it tells you how that's done. And again, I won't go into all the specific detail here. I'll, I'll try to do that uh, maybe uh, in a separate uh, video later. Since this is a three phase AC motor, I want to make sure that I place that template here for my wiring uh, diagram. And also I need to find the DC motor slash generator because as we studied, a DC machine can be either a generator or a motor, depending on what, how we connect it. Each one should have a ground green wire. We want to make sure that those are properly grounded on our uh, trainer. And we do that this way. Okay, so now we've got it grounded. We've got everything mounted. Um, we're, we're ready to proceed through to the uh, next part of this. All right, and then, so, you know, not going through each exact step, but going in order it's, it's presented to you. It says to locate the resistive load unit that is um, this thing here. And it says it's a resistive load that can dissipate up to 400 watts. So I will tell you up front, depending on what lab you're working on, the top of this thing can get pretty hot. So make sure you know that. It's got uh, five toggle switches and I need you to keep in your mind that the furthest to the left is A, B, C, D, E, uh, A, B, C, D, E, F, okay, oops. So um, they're all been assigned letters and those uh, designations for A, B, C, D, E, and F are given to you uh, there in that one uh, figure 22. Okay, now moving on. 
Let's see what he tells us to do. He doesn't really tell us to do anything with that yet. And now he's telling us to do the, to do the connection. Now, initially, you, you may sort of lean on the pictorials, and that's fine. Uh, I, I understand that. that it sort of gives you a layout of how to set this up. But what I want you to be doing ultimately, what I want you to be doing ultimately is going by these wiring schematics. And you've got two different ones. You've got one for the three phase motor here, and then you've got one for the DC series generator here. Okay. Now we will know, and, and we'll get real familiar with this uh, soon enough, but you know, for a three phase motor, we're going to bring in three phase power to this uh, motor and um, we'll discover that there's something called a Y connection and something called a Delta connection. Uh, we actually have Y configuration in our lab. So, um, you know, just for the time being, you know, we'll just leave it at that. And so we're wiring up a uh, three phase motor in a Y configuration. And we'll, we'll go into all the particulars about that later. We'll, we'll discover that there are actually nine leads and um, sometimes we're putting the windings in series and sometimes we're putting them in parallel. Uh, for Y configuration, we're actually putting the uh, uh, winding halves in parallel. Okay, so th this motor is good to go. It's, it's, it's uh, uh, connected and uh, ready to operate as a three phase AC induction motor. Now on the uh, DC, uh, motor generator side, what you're going to see is some of these things that we've been talking about in, in class, like uh, the uh, the field generation. You know, here's a, uh, a a series field winding. This is the armature. Oops, this is the armature. Okay, here's another uh, field that we're not actually going to be using um, today. Uh, this would give us a, a different operation. And this is the um, commutating our interpoles that we talked about that are used to alleviate our, our you know, the, the armature reaction that occurs when we connect this generator to a load. So really when you're following through with this, it's so simple. Just, just follow the, just, just find a starting point. So I'm gonna start with S1, which is the series field winding. And I'm gonna take a wire for S1, okay, and I'm going to plug it there, and I'm just going to leave that hanging. I'm going to work my way across this way. Just get a, just get yourself a direction and be consistent. Now, of course, we don't wire across this. That's an internal connection. So we've got S1 input, S2 output. So I'm going to take another wire, which is uh, S2, and it tells me to connect S2 into C1. And even if you don't know what those are, you know, you just follow the directions and, and you'll be fine. Just slamming it to the camera here. We'll get that reoriented. There we go. All right. Um, no Academy Awards here. Then after I connect to C1, I come to C2 and it tells me to take a wire and connect C2 to A1. C2 to A1, which is one side of the armature. And one thing we're going to do is we're going to try to figure out whether that brush um, that's connected to that armature is the positive or the negative brush. And then on the other side of that, I've got A2, which is the output of the armature. And I'm going to come output of the armature. And it says go into the resistive load unit. Well, I'm just going to, I don't know which one to go into, but I'm just going to put it in here at the top of the resistive load unit. And then on the other end of the resistive load unit, it says connect that to S1. So there's that one wire that I had left over. And so now I've done that and I've got all the connection done for the uh, schematics that it's shown us to do. Okay, now he says set toggle switches D, E and F up Okay, A, B, C, D, E, F. So set those up. And when I've done that, what I've done is I've put a load of 39 ohms to this generator. And of course we know that as we talked earlier, um, a lot of things change when a load's connected to the generator. And that's what we want to observe. 
And then once it, we've done that, it says notify the instructor that you're ready to operate the generator. We've gone through all the safety protocols at the, at the beginning of this thing, right? We've got our safety glasses on. Um, you know, we, we're uh, making sure that there's no uh, water on the floor, you know, all those kind of things. So we've gone through all the safety uh, parts of this. We've got everything hooked up, ready to go. So usually the way that we want to uh, go through this is to uh, throw the main breaker on the back first and then do the e-stop. Um, one thing it's uh, not had us do yet. Well, we'll go into uh, order that he says. He says after the instructor has released the emergency stop, turn on the three-phase breaker on the left side of the um, unit. Okay, and then when I do that, this comes on. You can hear it um, rotating. You can hear the two uh, machines uh, as they are energized. One thing you always want to make sure you don't have any wobble or excessive vibration when you're doing these hookups. Always, when you have something that's turning like this, make sure you shield it with this plexiglass in case a set screw or something were to possibly fall out. So now he says, for us to locate a digital multimeter set for DC voltage and determine what the voltage output is um, in the particular situation that we have. Okay, so we're looking at the voltage output from the alternator. And as we look here, we're going to get a particular reading. And then so we want to determine what that reading is. Now, as I look at the reading on the uh, multimeter, uh, and this is the blank that we're, we're filling in or, or we're you know, entering, depending on how we're doing the lab, right? And, and it says that uh, record what the generator output voltage is. If a, vo a positive voltage is displayed, the positive lead of the meter is connected to the positive brush. Well, we, we do have that. We have, I don't know if you can see this clearly, it looks like a glare on there, but it says 130 volts and it's giving us a positive reading. And just to show you what I'm talking about, uh, we could have swapped these leads out and we'll get the same voltage out it's just going to have the negative sign here. And that tells us that we have the leads reversed as to what the actual polarity is. So let's go back to, to what it was initially and see if I can remember what that was. I think it was here and here. No, it was here and here. Okay. Now we're getting uh, the positive out. And so what that tells me is when, you know, since the way this is wired, if you follow this back to here, that A2 is actually the positive terminal and A1 would be the negative terminal. Okay, now let me uh, go through the procedure on how to uh, shut this down and uh, press the emergency stop. System shuts down, shut off the meter, turn off the three phase breaker. And now you're ready for the next skill um, that we'll get into.